Hey everyone, Eric Thurber here from Thurber Shots and today we're going to talk about my favorite camera settings and different modes with various DJI drones. Uh, before we go into this, this is mostly just applicable to all DJI drones or drones or cameras in general, right? Uh, these are settings I typically use uh, for, for all of my professional shooting. Uh, today we'll be using the DJI Mavic 4 Pro as an example, but again, you can this is just the same in the Mavic 3 Pro or the Mini 4. Those are typically the drones that I use. So we're going to cover JPEG versus RAW in photography. We're going to talk about the histogram a little bit. We're going to talk about video settings, exposure settings, different modes, and a little bit about filming. So let's get into it. Let's start out by talking about JPEG versus RAW. By default, when you get this, any of these drones, the first thing out of the camera and the setup by default is JPEG mode. And that's fine if you want to use JPEG. And so let's talk a little bit about why you would do that. Uh, if you are just a hobbyist and you want to snap photos, a lot like maybe you would do with uh, your iPhone, something like that, or a point and shoot, uh, it takes care of all those in-camera settings for you. Um, in, in same thing with DJI, it does it inside the drone software and it'll produce a, an image the way it sees fit. And you won't have a lot of control of that in post, um, but it does give you a general image. Now, if you want something in RAW, uh, it comes out a lot more flat, right? And a little dull and listless, but at the same time, it gives you a lot more control in what you can do in post. We'll talk a little bit about that in the video settings coming up as well. So the first thing I typically do as soon as I get the drone is change it to RAW. And I have forgotten to do this, and I've known other photographers who forget to do this. They'll go out and shoot all day and go, oh man, I shot in JPEG mode. It's a hard lesson, but it's uh, you know one you won't quickly forget. You'll just, you know, you'll set it to back to RAW and you're good to go. So let's take a look at what you get here. We're, we are in camera mode. Let's take a look at our format. So you do get three formats. You get the JPEG as we talked about. That's just the standard. You get RAW, what most professionals use, or you can use JPEG and RAW. Keep in mind that it, it, it pops two images at the same time when you press the button when you use that, and it takes up a bit more storage. But you do have, like JPEGs, you can just rip right out if you want to show a client. And then you have your RAWs that you can pull into post at home and deal with that. Okay, so again, for me, I just tend to use RAW in that. Okay, so let's switch to video settings. And uh, some of this will be applicable to the, uh, the camera settings as well for, for regular shooting. But let's talk about video. Most of this is going to cover video too. So the first thing I want to talk about here in video, let's go into our camera settings. As you can see, I'm looking out, you know, at, at uh, my neighbors and at my house here. But let's talk about the different modes, right? So you've got normal mode, you've got D-Log, D-Log M, and HLG. So let's talk a little bit about what each of these are. So normal mode is uh, it's a lot like JPEG out of the camera. You're going to get the in-camera processing, and it's going to come out with all the colors and everything set the way that the camera thinks it should be set. And there's nothing wrong with that if, again, you're just a hobbyist and you want to get some point and shoot stuff, normal is the way to go. D-Log, this gives you the, a much flatter profile. And I'm going to give you some examples here. So this is what this looks like in D-Log. And I'm going to let that run for a minute here uh, so you can get a, an idea of the flat. It's flat. There's not a lot of color. It's listless. It's dull. It's gray. Uh, but that's what it looks like. Now, after we do some post-processing, this is what that looks like. Okay, so we pulled a lot of data out of that. We get a lot more data in the in the shadows. We get a lot more data in the highlights, right? And we get more color that we can pull out of that and control ourselves. So if post-processing is your thing and you don't mind that, then D-Log is what you want. Okay, D-Log M is the same really is it doesn't give you as much control as d-log but what it does is it, it it does some of a hybrid in there 
Um, so it's going to give you some color profile already added to it. So you have to do less in post, but you can still do some things in post. Okay, so think of it as just a you know a more controlled version of D log for color correction in post. Then HLG. A lot of people tend to use this for HDR, right? So you you want the, that gives you that really contrasty, brilliant brights and and a lot of detail and shadow. However, I've learned that most people who are shooting HDR, a lot of professionals anyway, are doing that in D log already, and then they're just taking care of all the HDR stuff in post. Okay, so the color display assist. This is something you can leave on if you want uh, to have on the screen when you're shooting, if you want it to look a certain way. Like if I'm shooting here in, in D-Log and you can see all the colors or everything are there and the pop is there, that's because that color assist is on. Okay. So, and you can also have that in, in uh, playback. Now I shoot, I tend to shoot in H265. Uh, you can shoot in H.264 if you want, uh, but if you got the processing power, H.265 uh, gives you a little bit more granular control over that. Okay, the rest of this stuff I tend to leave as is, uh, but I want to talk a little bit about the histogram. So you can see that uh, right there. You can see this on all of my cameras, even the camera I'm filming on right here, it has the histogram up. I learned to read this a long time ago as a photographer, and I can't tout it enough. Uh, essentially, if you get, uh, well, you can see in the histogram right here, for example, you've got nothing on either end and it's kind of rolling into the center. If it rolls into a nice little bell, it's, that's perfect, right? But if you get a little peak or a little bit of valley like we see here, that's okay too as long as it's not exceeding the peak levels, right, on both brightness and shadow. Uh, so the goal is to have a nice balanced image. Your histogram is going to give you that. Once you learn to read that, I mean, that's going to be your gold standard. So that is parked always at the bottom of my screen. I have that histogram open. The peaking levels, these are things you can set if you choose to. I choose not to do that. Some people can set the zebra settings to see when your highlights are blown. Um, I, I tend not to do that, right? I don't really have a need for that. I do have that set up for my regular SLR or mirrorless cameras, but for drone stuff, I really don't use it a whole lot. Uh, now, the, the grid lines, that's something that can be handy, but the most handy thing you're going to find here in all of the DJI stuff, if you're going to post to social, is going to be your frame guides, right? And I have mine set to 916 vertical. So let's turn this off. Take a look at what the camera sees. So there you go. It's just a big widescreen. This is what you see. So if I'm shooting this and I want to shoot for social, I only want this part here for social, right? So what's that going to look like? Mm, we're guessing. Turn these on. Turn on the frame guide to 916. This is where I go for vertical, right? This is your social. This is your Instagram, your TikTok, all of that. Now once that's on, you can see now you've got a frame in here. Right, it's like sunglasses on both sides, and everything you're filming for 916 is in that centerpiece. It takes all the guesswork out of this because you don't want guesswork. Otherwise, you're going to be like, "Man, I thought that was framed. It's not." You're going to come back and look at it in post. This eliminates that need. To me, this is one of the best things DJI could have ever done is to put that in there. It wasn't in there until the last couple of years. They finally implemented it. So, if you're shooting for social, this is definitely what you want. Okay, so let's talk about video settings, right? Uh, this case, I'm using the DJI Mavic 4 Pro. It has 6K 60, uh, and it also has 4K 120. Uh, you know, and we, frame rates are really a separate discussion entirely, right? I'll speak for me personally. I like to use 4K 60. It gives it a great smooth shot. I know that when I'm working with... Uh, with with real photographers who, who are out filming scenes and commercials and movies, they like 23.97 or 24 frames per second. Um, and to me, just because I'm so used to seeing 60, 
it just looks jarring. And I tell them, I'm like, man, I don't know what to do about that. And they're like, well, that's what that normally looks like. You just don't realize it. So there's an argument to be had for both. Uh, depending on your situation, you can just kind of flip that back and forth. I know one of the mainstream uh, methods for a lot of uh, drone people is 4K 30 frames per second. So I would just research that a little bit and see what you think works best for you. For me, again, it's 4K 60. I really like those smooth, super buttery uh, shots and it gives me that ability. Let's talk about auto. Uh, I will use auto mode a lot. And I have no compunctions admitting that. I know there's a lot of people and a lot of egos like you got to manual everything. You got to, you know what? If the picture looks good to you, uh, I will shoot it in auto. Uh, you know, I'm already filming in D-Log. If, if it's a nice, well-balanced scene, do I need to go in and tweak all those settings? I really don't. Um, and if there is a need to do that, that's when we can start going into some of these manual modes, right? And we could talk about aperture priority and shutter priority, both are which baked in, not under those names, but if you're a photographer and you're used to using those modes, we're gonna go into just how those work. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about these manual settings. As you can see, I'm here in auto mode, and it's a nice scene, and I really don't need anything there. But let's talk about if you, if you are gonna go into to, uh, manual mode and what some of those changes are. Okay, so change that to manual, okay. And take a look. So we have, you can set these to auto, right? And it'll automatically look at the scene. So this is really wonderful. This is something you can do with your mirrorless or SLR as well, right? So um, you can see that it's, it's giving me the shutter speed and it's giving me the aperture. So let's say I want to lock that shutter and only change the aperture. Just turn off auto on the one. Or, or if you want to leave the aperture, I should say, and change the shutter. Okay, so you lock the aperture. And we're putting this in, in into basically shutter priority. We're saying we want to choose the shutter speed. Conversely, we can just set that back to auto. And now we're in aperture priority. And it does put a star next to this. See this? It's pretty cool because it's telling you that's the best setting that it sees. And make no mistake, man, the, these cameras are smart. They know. They have an idea of how to balance this stuff out. So if you want to use that as your baseline and then just go into shutter priority. But for this example, we're going to use aperture priority. And let's say we don't want 2.8. We want to change that up to something a little more balanced. We want less bokeh in the background or something. We can change it to F4. And then again, we're looking at that histogram on the left to make sure that things are still within that, you know, we have that little curve in the middle. we got nothing too big on the right, nothing too big on the left. This is kind of what we want. Okay, let's talk a little bit about night mode. Um, the, the, of course, the Mavic 4 Pro doesn't have this because it, it utilizes dual gain ISO that's already, you know, baked into the camera when you start using low light settings. When you're using D-Log M, okay? You, same thing goes for D-Log, only you'll get a little bit more noise in D-Log and you have to kind of handle that in post. But in the Mavic 3 Pro and some of the earlier models, they have night mode. And I can't tell enough about night mode. It's an awesome setting, right? Uh, you, it crushes the blacks, does a great job of bringing in the color and the pop. I do a lot of professional shooting with night mode. And I've talked to other photographers on site who are like, how could you use that in not manual settings? And I'll tell you, it's because it's so awesome. It does the job for you. Uh, you can control some of the other settings once you're in night mode, but uh, essentially putting it in night mode is key. So keep that in mind for low light. Don't ignore uh, the features that come with the drone. They are there to help you out. So let's talk a little bit about ND filters as well. Um, you know, the, you get a, a variable aperture on on the, the 1X camera on these, right? So it could be 2.8 to F11 you know, or something to that effect. You can change those things. Uh, and of course you can change shutter if it's, if it's on a fixed aperture, but it's like the, the, the 3X and the 7X or the 2.5X and the 6X in the Mavic 4, those have fixed apertures. So it is 
uh, static and you cannot change it. At this point, that's where you want to use your ND filters. I tend to use Freewell, but uh, I don't mind uh, DJI's either. They're just a lot more expensive. Uh, and in the end, in my footage and my tests, I can't really tell the difference. So I spend a lot less for Freewell and, and they've always worked out well for me. But, you know, in the middle of the day when it's really bright, you want to think of that as putting on sunglasses, right? It's the same thing for your drone. So let's talk about different modes, right? So when you're shooting, you got cine mode, you got normal mode, and then you got sport mode. And what these different modes mean, right? And, and there's, there's also talk about, you know, how you can dial in these settings. And I see a lot of people talk about the uh, gain in expo. I trained myself to work with the, the sticks the way they are, right out of the thing. So I can grab any drone, uh, you know, RC and start controlling it. I've just, I've learned to tune my thumbs uh, and fingers to the way that it comes out stock. Now you can tweak those around. I know other people have and I've tried it after learning to do it the normal way and I find it really cumbersome and hard to use. Once you learn it, it's not so bad. So it's up to you how you approach it, but you can just learn it right out of the box and then you'll never have to worry about tweaking that again. Uh, anytime you get to a different drone or a new drone or whatever that is. So um, so let's talk about Cine. I will use Cine a lot, especially for my parallax shot because it's really jumpy. Not only after you zoom in is it jumpy, but the fact that you're cropping after you zoom in as well. Super, you know. So what I'll do is I'll, tr I'll just establish the shot and then I'll slowly do the pan and, and move it through, right? Cine is great for that because it just it keeps everything at a nice even pace. Um, now normal, I use that for almost everything otherwise, even some of the parallax stuff too because the faster you move, the more dramatic it can be. Um, but again, like I say, you have to just practice with the sticks. And then you, you got to stabilize in post too. It's not just your thumbs, right? So there's a lot of work that goes into those. And then sport. So if you're really moving in on something that's, a, that's farther away, sport's a good mode to use for that. You have to be aware that uh, it, it turns those sensors off, so you got to have your situational awareness. So by and large, though, I usually just use uh, standard normal mode for everything.